It's summertime and that means our warm season grasses where I live down in Alabama are looking great for the most part. I'm very happy with how my yard is looking overall. But in this video, I want to give you some of the problems that I'm seeing in my own yard and give you some solutions because I know for the most part, what I'm seeing in my yard is what I'm seeing in a lot of my customers' yards and what I'm getting phone calls about and what I'm talking to people about when I'm getting text messages with pictures about about what's going on in their lawn too. Today's video is sponsored by Yardbook. If you're in the lawn care business and you need a software, go with the one I've been using since 2015. Go to yardbook.com for a free account. So let's go over some of these problems in the yard. I wanna to try to give you some solutions to how to get these things straightened out, or at least tell you what I'm doing or if there is a solution. So let's get started. So one thing I wanna show you that's kind of weird in yards, and I get questions about this. I remember having somebody and they said, they sent me a picture and they thought that their yard had weeds all over the yard, Bermuda grass yard. And what they were actually talking about was this, and that's the seed head. Now, what do you do about a seed head? Well, first off, just understand like grass putting up a seed head is normal for it to do that. I mean, it just, it just is. Now you got grasses like Bahia grass and stuff like that. It just goes to seed so fast and looks terrible. but. I will say that, you know, for instance, in this yard, I've got a little bit of common Bermuda mixed in with my hybrid Bermuda. So the common Bermuda goes to seed much faster. And so as they develop these hybrid Bermudas, that's probably one of the desirable qualities is for it not to go to seed as quick because it doesn't look good. But oftentimes when it goes to seed, it may be indicating that your grass either needs water or needs some other type of nutrient. So, I have noticed that. I've got a few customers that they don't even want any fertilizer. They just want the weeds control. You know, their grass is more likely to go to seed faster or when we're in a dry period. So that is something that you could do is make sure that you fertilize your yard and make sure it's getting enough water and that can help with the seed head. The other thing you can do, and I do this on my yard too, is I spray a growth regulator. I use a product called Podium. There's other ones out there, T-Nex and stuff like that, Primo Max. And, um, but I think they all, all those have the same active ingredient. But I spray that about once a month during the growing season and it can greatly reduce how fast uh, you have to mow the grass for one. That's the main reason I do it. But it also can reduce how quickly uh, the grass puts up a seed head, give you some seed head suppression, if you will. It's natural for it to have a seed head, it may be indicating that, it, that if it's going to seed really quickly that it's not getting enough nutrients, you may need fertilizer or it's just dry, you may need water. And if, if you're still going to seed head faster than you want, which again is, is perfectly normal for the grass to do that, then you could try the growth regulator. A second thing I want to show you that I keep seeing in the lawn during the summer, and this is a, a problem year after year, is this, nut sedge. Now, we control in the summer can be tricky and I want to explain why. Oftentimes when I get someone that calls me in the summer and wanting their yard treated and I go out there and it's full of weeds, if, depending on what time of the year he is and depending on talking to the customer, sometimes I'll even encourage them, let's wait till the fall and let's let some of these annual weeds die out from the cold weather. Let's put our fall pre-emergent out. And, and because when you got weeds in the summer, it can be tricky to go out there and blanket spray it. One issue that's going against you is the really hot weather. So I'm very cautious to go out there and just blanket spray a whole yard when the temperatures are hot. And you wanna make sure that you're following the label and a lot of them have temperature restrictions on them. So in the summertime, I, I'm typically out there spot treating weeds like nut sedge. And what I try to do is put together a sedge product with a broadleaf product that'll give me some versatility and be able to control a lot of weeds. So what does that look like for me practically? I might use products like Celsius and Certainty mixed together. That's kind of my go-to combination for warm season lawns. And to be able to go out there and it'll, it'll help with grassy weeds. I can spray it on Dallas grass. It gives me some suppression. It helps a little bit with crabgrass and all the broadleaf stuff and the sedges. It's gonna do a great job. Sometimes I'll mix change up with, with Certainty or I'll mix change up with ProSedge. Now, I use Certainty usually over ProSage because Certainty works well on Kalinga as well as your purple and yellow nut sage. Where ProSage is good on the yellow and purple nut sage, but not so good on Kalinga, at least in my experience. So the idea is if I've already put out my pre-emerge early in the year, I've already controlled many, many weeds in the lawn during the much cooler months of the year, then in the summer I can go around, yes, I'm gonna be dealing with Virginia buttonweed 
and chamber bitter and spurge and nudsedge and kalinga and things like that, but I can mix up Celsius and certainty and go around and spot treat those and get some good suppression without going out there and just blanking in the whole yard when it's 90 degrees, which I would not recommend. The third thing I wanna show you, and this is kind of a pain, but you can see these little brown spots all in this yard, and it's dollar spot. And dollar spot is kind of mostly just cosmetic. I mean, it makes brown spots all over your yard, which looks kind of bad, and it can be worse than others. But if we get down here and look at it closely, you see it's actually the leaf of the grass is brown. And what causes that is water sitting on the lawn overnight. So if you're watering in the evening, it can cause that. But I don't water this grass, but I can't help it when it rains in the evening. I'm glad it rains in the evening. But if it rains consistently, then you end up with dollar spot. Now, what can you do about that? Well, you can fertilize the lawn and it helps it grow out of it faster. And then as you mow the grass, you kind of mow the brown spots off. But as we continue to get afternoon showers, it's going to continue to be a problem. You can use a fungicide. But my understanding, a fungicide is not really going to reverse what's already done, and it may give you just as little as like three weeks of prevention from it happening again. So because it's mostly just cosmetic and fungicides can be expensive, I typically just let it grow out of this problem. And you know how it goes when it's raining a lot. People are happy that their yard's green, but then you complain about the fungus, and then it quits raining, and they don't have any fungus, but then they're upset because it's not raining enough. So it's just hard to have a perfect situation, but a dollar spot is very, very common in my area. I see it almost every single summer. The issue you may have in your lawn, I want to talk about how to deal with it in the summertime, is bare spots. Now this area, actually I've got several acres of Bermuda grass, and I just put out a little bit of sod and have let it spread over the years. If you knew the channel, we cleared pretty much all this land back here. It was just wooded and nastiness, and so we cleared it and got to fill in. Well, this part was just sodded last year and I did the same thing just put a little bit of Bermuda out here and let it spread. Now that gave me a couple problems that I, I sort of regret honestly. Um, one is, is a little bit lumpy because we didn't smooth it out that great. So I've got sand and topsoil over there and trying to do some top dressing here. And summer's a great time to do that because it, it allows the, the grass is growing fast and it can grow up through the sand quickly and establish itself and also leveling it out. But with the bare spots, is one thing, I, I don't like the summer heat very much, but for my lawn, because I've been trying to fill it in over the past several years, these bare spots, I like summer because it is filling in quite fast. You can see how it's spreading. So, I mean, last year this looked pretty terrible, and now it's pretty much filled in for the most part in this area. And of course, my front yard looked the same, and I've done acres and acres like this. So these spots here, as I film this in the middle of summer, I think by the fall, that this will be filled in with grass. And again, with the sand and topsoil, hopefully I can get it smoothed out where it'll look halfway presentable. Now, if you want to speed that process up and you're tired of waiting, you can use this thing. I can put a link to it in the description. This is the Pro Plugger. And it costs about 40 bucks at the time of this video. And it's really cool. Uh, you just step on it. I've done a lot of videos with this thing. You just step on it, it helps on a wet day, and try to pull plugs from your existing grass. And then you step on it to make holes in the bare area. And you take those plugs and you put them in the bare area. So these were just done recently. And soon they're gonna start to spread and hopefully you know, take off and, and fill in this bare spot right here. Now I could go buy some sod or whatever, but I just thought, well, we've got this pro plugger and I'm actually be doing a lot of this in one area over here. I'll show you what's going on one side of my yard. You say, Jason, what's going on over here? Well, actually I had common Bermuda grass mixed in with my hybrid Bermuda and I didn't like the way it looked and the common was going to seed head much faster than the hybrid. And so what I did in this situation was come here and spray it with glyphosate to kill out the common. Well, I left these weird shapes in my lawn. This may fill in by the end of the year, I'm not sure, but to speed it up, I think I'm gonna take the Pro Plugger and I'm gonna just put plugs in this. I've got a separate video going on this from when I sprayed it and I've got to show plugging it and get it to fill in, but it's already filling in on its own, even from the sides. But I think if I use the Pro Plugger, hopefully I can fix these bald spots before the growing season ends this year. Earlier I had referenced Virginia buttonweed. This is a common weed I deal with in the summer. Really hard to kill, I think, even with Roundup, 
but I do use a change up on it. It's a good product. Blind side's a good product. The Celsius Certainty combo is pretty good on it as well. Just to show you, this is my front yard, and this was plugged with sod a few years ago. And you see, it does fill in. I've kind of smoothed it out and everything, and it looks pretty good. The last thing I want to mention is mowing. I had somebody call me the other day, and they said, Jason, I'm mowing my grass once a week, and it's so thick that I'm having to mow it three times. This was somebody's yard. I had only fertilized the yard one time, but I was glad it was growing in some sense because this guy's yard had some bare spots and I thought, well, it needs to grow to be able to fill in these bare spots. But I can understand how it's frustrating having to mow your yard three times. I said, well, here, here's kind of my theory on mowing, especially these warm season grasses, in particular Bermuda grass, which just grows like crazy in the summer. I try to get it down as low as possible in the springtime. So for me, that's basically an inch and a half. That's about as low as my mower will cut it. Get rid of all that dormant grass. Let the sunlight get down the roots and start greening up my lawn. Now, I try to keep it there as long as I can. And so through April into May, I can usually keep it an inch and a half. But as I start getting into May and June, the weather starts warming up. It's very hard for me to keep it an inch and a half unless I want to mow the grass every three or four days, which I don't necessarily want to do. So even mowing it once a week or even every five or six days, it's very hard to do this. For instance, the other day I mowed it after five days and I had to raise the deck a quarter of an inch and I felt like it still was scalping it a little bit. So it starts growing so fast that you gradually have to start raising the deck, the cutting height, so that you're not scalping it. Growth regulator I mentioned before, the podium product that I, that I talked about and that helps with the seed head, it also slows it down. I've been spraying it. I sprayed it about two days ago on my lawn because it's growing fast and I want to slow it down and not have to mow it so often. So it basically reduces my mowing by about 50%. So I'm doing that once a month in the, the busy growing season. So I think I sprayed it in May, did it in June, did it in July, I might do it one more time in August. After that, I can probably handle it on my own because it's going to slow down a little bit. For those of you with cool season grasses, that would probably be something you'd want to do more in the springtime when it's growing like crazy. But again, adjust your mowing height, mow it more frequently. Also, if I'm out here early in the morning, there's dew all over the ground, sometimes mowing it can can be tough on the mower. I mean, you got all that dew and wet grass that's clumping up everywhere, and, and if you scalp it or take it a little bit too much off, you can leave some brown spots. So, I mean, honestly, it's probably a little bit better in the evening time. I, I mow in the morning, I don't care, but I'm just saying, just understand that if you're out there mowing and it's growing real fast and you're insisting on keeping it mowed short, you're probably gonna take some of the color off of it and, and leave some brown spots. Now, it bounces back, I'm not worried about that, but if you want to keep it low, you're going to have to mow it quite frequently uh, or just gradually raise your deck a little bit so that you're not taking too much of the grass blade off at one time. But I guess because I live in the South, I'm a little biased. People all the time saying, uh, talking about their cool season lawns, and I'll admit they do look good when they have all the stripes going everywhere. Um, but in the summertime, those cool season lawns, a lot of times are, are struggling to survive the heat and our warm season lawns can look good too. So here's my Bermuda grass line. Some people hate Bermuda. I certainly don't mind it. And it did great spreading on my yard because I didn't have to spend very much money to get this to spread and have three acres of Bermuda grass. Now three acres is a lot to cut, but I, I can handle it with my big mower. I hope the video's been helpful. Appreciate you watching. There's some links in the description. You wanna check that out. Also the 2024 Lawn Care Life Conference is coming up February 23rd, 24th in Springville, Alabama. There is early bird ticket pricing available. It's 197, that includes your meals. And that is a Friday night and Saturday event. Got a lot of speakers coming. This is the fourth time I've held the event and really excited about it this year. I feel like it's gonna be the biggest and best one ever. We have a limited capacity of 300 tickets that we're selling. And I do believe this event is going to sell out. The same website, LawnCareLife.com. That's where you can find the info on the conference. But it's also where you'll find the Weed Control and Fertilization Academy. There's pricing charge. There's program, things like that, that I use for my weed control and fertilization business. This is mostly for people with warm season grasses that are wanting to get into weed control and fertilization, maybe coming from a mowing background or just starting from scratch. That's what that course is for. You might want to check it out. Thanks for watching. Leave me a comment, subscribe if you haven't done so, and we'll see you guys in the next video. Hey everybody, it's Jason Creel. And let me be the first to invite you to the 2024 Lawn Care Life Conference, February 23rd and 24th in Springville, Alabama, just outside of Birmingham. I've got my friend Paul Jamison, Alan Hayne, Caleb and Brittany Allman, Jeremy Vest, 
Naylor Taliaferro, Jeremiah Jennings, and others coming, and hopefully you coming to this year's event. We've got seats for 300 people, and this year's gonna be bigger and better than ever. This is our fourth conference to do, and the early bird ticket prices is $197. That includes all your meals. We got a Friday night session, we got dinner, we got an after party, and we got breakfast and lunch on Saturday with day full of sessions. We've got equipment to ride on, giveaways, sponsors. It's gonna be a great event, a lot of transparency, a lot of interaction, a lot of tips on how to grow your business and a lot of fun. We hope to see you February 23rd, 24th, Springville, Alabama. I absolutely love Jason and Tracy Creole. They have humongous hearts of hospitality. They host a wonderful event. I attended it back in 2020 and I'm really looking forward to returning to Sweet Home, Alabama for the 2024 Lawn Care Life Conference. Hey guys, I can't wait to see you at Jason's event this February. There's going to be a lot of speakers giving as much value as they can, such as myself as well as a lot of great networking opportunities. Hope to see you there soon. Hey y'all, I'm Alan Hain, the Lawn Care Nut. Happy to let you know that I will be attending the Lawn Care Life Conference in 2024, February 23rd and 24th of 2024. This is Jason Creel's conference. This is the fourth year. I've been there every year. I'll be a keynote speaker this year, gonna bring you some fire. I'd say there's no better place that you can go to to, to get the tools you need to be successful. Like-minded people, Good networking. I've learned a lot about growing my business more than anything here. I tell you what, this place could not be any better. We got a lot of great information, a lot of great speakers. The food was awesome. Jason Krill has done a very, very excellent job in uh, presenting this lawn care conference. It's awesome to meet some of the guys that you follow on YouTube. You're around like-minded people who also want to grow, and you're listening to people who are just like you who are also growing. Definitely be coming back next year.